My name is Stacy Williams Ung, and I'm an artist. I've done children's book illustration, I've done painting, but I really got the bug for doing murals and even chalk art. I just love public art, and I've been doing that probably for the last 10 years. One of the things I like so much about public art, and the reason I was so taken by it when I sort of made the transition from the studio to wanting to be outside, was people's reactions to it. When you do art and put it in a gallery, you don't always get to see the reaction. You don't get to interact with people, which is okay, but it just doesn't compare to the live action of making it almost as a performance and then having people ask you about it while you're doing it. And sometimes that informs the work, which I totally love. This project was different because we had to apply this very special coating. It's called super hydrophobic paint, some call it. Some people call it aquaphobic, but whatever you call it, it's this magical concoction that keeps concrete from getting wet. That's basically all it is. So we can't let it get wet during the process, but it dries pretty quickly. So we had some kids around and we were able to invite the kids over and say, can you see it? And see their reaction, which was really awesome. So this project was inspired by a bad thing, which is pollution, and the impulse to try and teach kids about it, and really not just kids, but remind ourselves how dangerous it is. When I first learned about this aquaphobic paint, this sort of magic, invisible paint, I was trying to think what would be a good story to use it for versus just, hey, you know, there's a picture of a shoe and it appears when it gets wet. That's great and that's really fun on the surface, but it's even more fun when you think about what if that shoe or what if that water bottle or whatever it's a silhouette of that's appearing is part of telling you a story. And so the story that I thought would be really poignant is the idea of pollution in our rivers. The Mississippi River has a really bad pollution problem. Tennessee River, even worse, apparently. But you go there and you take one glance at the river, or even if you spend all day on it on a boat, you don't necessarily see that pollution. It's hidden. And so I think because it's not immediately evident to us, we turn a blind eye unless someone puts in front of us documentation of really how severely it's affecting our ecosystem, how severely it's affecting the flora and fauna who are living in that river. So I just thought it would be nice to have this interesting parallel it's almost a visual pun. You know, the splash pad, our fountain here at Crosstown is the river. And appearing out of nowhere are things that don't belong in a river. And even a young child can understand that. I put together some activity sheets for kids. And one of them is circle the things that don't belong in a river. So there are things that do belong. So I have a couple of catfish, a snake, some leaves. Um, and those are things that we should be seeing in a river. But when you see cans, water bottle, I had a bikini because so I thought it would be fun, you know, try to put some humor into it, a comb, a hair dryer, just any household object. You'd be surprised the kind of things they find at the bottoms of rivers, just ridiculous. I think the water bottle is the quintessential piece of litter, but there's a lot more in our rivers that is just terrible and it's our human's fault. So it's time for us to buck up and realize that it's a problem.